Welcome back guys or welcome to your first time here. I'm Vision here at Blind Entertainment bringing you guys another video. Today we talk about seven things I want to see in the 100 season 7. Now if the 100 is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would be missing more 100 related videos from me moving forward. Now let's begin. Now number seven is learning more about Hope's background. Now at the end of season six you had Hope Dio's daughter return from the anomaly. Now she's a grown up adult. Now, last we had seen of her, she was in utero with Dioza, and so now I'm curious as to know her background. Now, the reason I have it at number seven is I think even J Jason Raffenberg confirmed we're going to learn more about it, but I want to see, like, how she knows Octavia, what happened while they were in there together. I'm curious as to all those things, and I just hope that it's good backstory, and it's not just, like, you know... Stuff like, you know, they know each other, they saw each other once or something. I want it to be, like, solid backstory, like, where somehow Octavia somehow went into the anomaly earlier. And, I don't know, like, I I'm confused. Because I don't know how to put this, but, like, maybe Octavia, when she disappeared in the anomaly earlier, she was gone for longer than we had thought. And that's when she met up with Hope and she was, like, grown up at that point or, you know, at least born at that point. So I want to find out more about her background, how she knows Octavia, and just good background and solid background altogether. But since we already know this is most likely going to happen, that's why it made my number seven. My number six thing that I want to see happen in season seven is the fallout after Abby's death. Now, Abby has impacted three characters. She's impacted Clark, Raven, and Jackson. Now, we already saw how it most likely how it's going to affect Clark in the trailer, but I also want to see how it impacts Raven. Raven saw Abby as like a mother figure. figure. I want to see how that, that impacts Raven. I, I think that'd be an interesting storyline to see, and as they had just made up just before she was killed. So I'm curious to see what the fallout of that will be. And then I also want to see what the relationship or fallout with Jackson. How will he react? We don't get much from him, and I don't expect to get too much. But I would like to see just a tad bit of his reaction and the aftermath of her death with him. Because I think there'd be important things to see between these three characters. And I know people didn't really like Abby. I did. And I thought she was a very good character. But I'm very curious to see what goes on here. Now we know, I think it's Clark says in the trailer that Russell must die for what he's done. And that's poss probably her going after him for killing Abby. However, I don't believe he's going to die right away at least because we know he's been promoted to a series regular so he's most likely gonna survive at least probably the first few episodes probably into the at least the first half in my opinion i don't know but i am curious to see what the aftermath will be of abby's death in regards to you know just what will happen with her and or what will happen with clark and raven mostly following that her death and of course jackson as well now my number five thing is that I want to see more about Shen Hedda and the Grounders in regards to that storyline. We kind of got a glimpse of it through Indra's exposition, but I also want to see it like flashbacks or something like that through Maddie or some kind of visions. I don't want to just hear, oh, he did this and that. I want to actually see it. I want to, and I know there's probably limits of what they can actually show on TV, but I at least want to get some kind of feel of what it is, like similar to how they showed the flashbacks of how to want a crew turned into cannibals. I think that they could easily do it with the Shinheta in this season. And I just hope it's good. I want it to be good backstory. I don't want it just to be crummy. He's one of the few male, like a big male grounder who's like a prominent character. So I really don't want them to just show it for, uh, flush it down the toilet and be bad. Because I just, I hate when they do those kind of things where the males are like, you know, not as big or do they look horrible for this reason. Whereas the women are always built up. And the 100 kind of has done that where all the women are put in power. Which I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm not like saying that they shouldn't be. Because I'm not, it probably makes me sound sexist, but I'm totally not. But I just want them to be more in the forefront. I want to see this be more than just him 
being a sociopath. I want to see like some, something like where something happened that he turned into the dark commander for such and such reasons. I don't want it just to be, oh, he was a narcissist or psychotic and that's what, why he's so called the dark commander. I want to have it be like he turned because of this reason. Number four thing I want to see for season seven of the hundred is more background on the primes and how they came to power. Because I feel like there's a big gap in between the flashback in episode two of season six and then what happened when we got to meet them in episode three because we saw them and they're just you know regular people so what made them turn the switch and become gods like that that just doesn't make any sense how did they go from being you know peaceful and all that to being gods i mean i know they did the whole mind drive thing and the whole resurrection but i don't believe that that would turn into the whole god complex so quickly i feel like over time things would have changed so i really want to see more of their backstory and just see the connections between some of the other ones. Do flashbacks. And use Russell as like flashbacks as to the upcoming of the Primes. That way we can see some of the older Primes and the other Primes that we never got to meet. And just dig some more deeper into the Prime background. Because I think that lacked last season. Just give them a little bit more. That way you can kind of connect with them. And kind of understand them a bit more. Because I feel like that was something that lacked last season. Was just not having enough you know, connection to the primes, whereas you can see them and understand what they're doing. But I also want to know why they did this, what changed them into just being regular people and then becoming so, you know, wanting of the Nightblood. I mean, I get it. They wanted to live and not want, always have hosts, but there has to be more to that, I believe. My number three pick is that I want to see cameos from characters that have passed on the show or left the show. So, I, I don't know. This, do, given the fact that the anomaly is said to be some kind of like pow, uh, time travel thingy, I think they could use that to, adv- to their advantage. Also, a lot of TV shows just in general will bring back old characters, even if they're dead or not. They'll bring them back like sort of flashbacks, hallucinations or whatever, But they, which they could do here. But I feel like they could also use this use the anomaly as a way to do that as well. So you, they could bring back characters like Jasper. They could bring back characters like Jaha, Lincoln, Lex, if they could get the actress. So many things and possibilities. They could bring back Finn. They could bring back Wells. They could do all these characters that have come and passed over the years of the 100. They could bring back Luna. They could bring back Rowan. All these great characters that were on and died throughout the series could be brought back. They could bring back Sinclair. Pike, maybe. We we kind of got him last season, but you get the point. They could bring back any of these grounder coins or characters or hunt or characters from the arc and have them show up. I think that would be a really, really cool idea. And I think given that every, every pretty just about every TV show does it where it's the last season and they'll bring back every single character, or at least most of the characters that were iconic to the show. So I think if they if they use the anomaly to their advantage with time travel, they could easily bring back some of the big iconic characters and give them a little bit more to do or at least give them another one last appearance on the show. I think that'd be very cool. And I think that just how every show usually does, I think it's something that should happen. Now, my last two are probably just personal, and I highly expect that you, bo- everybody would probably disagree with me on this, but my number one, number two is going to be a mass slaughter of most of our characters. Now, I don't mean like, you know, slaughter, slaughter, but what I mean is just kill a bunch of our characters off this season. I feel like, at least in my opinion, this show always plays it safe and never kills off that many characters. And I think since it's the final season, have it go out of a bang. Kill off a good amount of characters, like maybe Miller, you got Nyla, maybe you got Murphy, maybe. You got a whole handful of characters that have been on since season one. And yes, I know everybody wants a happy ending, but you don't always get that in a show. And I think that maybe one way that they end up getting their happy ending is that a sacrifice from a bunch of our characters. They can get rid of Indra. There's so many characters on the show that I think a mass slaughter is something that would be helpful and just end it with, you know, a good, a handful of our characters like Clark, Octavia, Raven, a couple of those characters. Like, don't give us, like, everybody's happily ever after in the end, end of the season. I think everybody wants that. But honestly, to me, I think that that's kind of playing it safe. Give people something different. Give Make it a curveball. 
And I know people probably don't agree with me, but I think that could definitely be something cool and a good way to end out the se- uh, end out the series since we have so many characters that have been around since like season one, season two, and that we just just kill a bunch of them off as as a way to get to our happy ending for the show. Now, my number one thing that I think should happen by the end of the season is one of the Blake siblings dies. Now, I know I'm probably going to get so much hate for this, especially from the Blark fans, but I think it should be Bellamy that dies. I think that Bellamy should go out. We know that Octavia went missing at the end of last season due to Anomaly, so he's going to rescue her. Now, we all know his big mantra is his his sister, his responsibility. So I think it'd be like a really poetic ending that he ends up saving Octavia, but end up but in the process it gets himself killed or dies in the process. I think that'd be a, an extremely well done poetic ending for the character. Like he finally is able to save her, she's okay, but in the, in doing so, it cost him his life. I think that'd be an incre- incredibly great storyline to do. And just a way to book out, bookend his story. Because I think with him, like we, like I said, it's always been he has to protect his sister. And it's always his responsibility. So what better way for him to do it than to make sure she lives. And in doing so, he sacrifices himself. Now, I know Bark fans are probably screaming and yelling at me right now. Because they want him and Clark to be together in the end. I don't care. I've said that they should be best friends since the beginning. And I don't, I just don't like the character, uh, or at least the pairing of those characters. I like him and Echo a lot better. And I think it'd be pretty interesting if at the end of the season it's revealed that, you know, she's carrying, uh, you know, his baby or whatever. I think that'd be something cool to add in too. I don't know. I think with everything that's going on, I don't think that both of them should survive the season. I think that one should go out. I was hating Octavia for a bit due to what they do over in season five. But at this point, I'm okay. And depending on what they do over this season, I might they might redeem her for me. But right now, I'm thinking Octavia lives and then Bellamy ends up dying, sacrificing himself to save his sister. I think that'd be an extremely well done bookend ending for his character. His storyline comes full circle. And it just is, I think it'd be very well done and something that would be smart in regards to storytelling hey guys those are my seven things i want to see in season seven of the hundred as always if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon that would miss any more hundred rated videos from me moving forward and you go follow me on instagram and twitter which are linked in the about section on my youtube channel as always this is my vision here with blind entertainment and i'll see you next time